Hi, I'm Peter Kallström of Kallström.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I'll talk about SharePoint containers. And the context for this presentation is that I've done a demo on how to do an inventory of your file share and in preparation for moving to SharePoint. And of course, once you've inventoried all of your, your file folders, you'll notice that these don't readily translate into SharePoint containers. Of course, there's a lot of choices that you can make when um, doing SharePoint containers. The obvious choice is just drag and drop all the files into a document library and then you're done, right? Yes, you could certainly do that, but it's generally considered a very, very bad idea. First of all, you probably have different permissions on the different folders in your file share. So uh, setting permissions on folders will cause issues in, in SharePoint. And also the navigation it's difficult when it comes to deep folder structures in SharePoint. Search will work rather badly if you have lots of folders within a SharePoint document library and it scales very badly in general so don't do that. There's others that have talked a lot about why to avoid folders as much as possible inside SharePoint and there's a link there to a presentation called 10 reasons to avoid folders in SharePoint that uh, I would recommend that you read through and generally it's just a bad way to store information Consider if a hotel booking website, whichever one you like, had their information stored in folders. Say so you had one folder for London, well that would make sense, but then you go into that folder and then you find all the hotels that have free Wi-Fi. Yep, it still makes sense, right? But then there's another folder for the hotels that have a free breakfast, or the ones that are close to Hyde Park, or something like that. And you'll notice that in order to actually gain the information or read about the information of those hotels that you want, you would have to go into at least three different folders. And um, the same applies to the information in your organization. People who are trying to find the information in your file folders will have that problem when they're going through different file folders. So don't do the same thing in SharePoint again. Don't go into the same mistakes again. So what should you do instead? Well. Of course, you can create multiple site collections that has some benefits. For example, you can create one content database for each site collection. You can also create subsites, one for each um, document folder. And you can create multiple document libraries. You have the default one called documents, but that's a very, very bad name. I usually talk about that as if you put a file cabinet in, in your office space and uh, write the letters paper on it. It's a bad idea, right? People know that there are paper in there, but they want to know what kind of papers are in there. Are there invoices, quotes, specifications, what's in there? So document libraries is an option certainly. Then you have the metadata and you want to tag your information and that's usually uh, the best choice to do. You can use choice fields, you can use managed metadata and usually that's the best option for you to tag your information. However, there are some drawbacks to that. Uh, it does require a wide acceptance to change within your company, moving all those files. It also requires end user training and finally, of course, it does um, require an agreement on which tags are actually needed in the organization. So given that preparation, I'm going to talk you through a little PowerShell script I have, which takes the information in um, my inventory files. I have my inventory files here. That uh, old folder CSV, I'm going to open that with Excel. And here you see I have that information there. I'm just going to split that now by text to columns there and those are delimited by the pipe symbol there we go I'm just going to finish that and you see I have the choice there now I can fill out what I want these to be and it actually becomes easier if I do a um, sort here we go sort by A to C and here I can see the information here and how, how many levels there are the folder name etc then I can just input my choice there so say I wanted this to be a web this to be a document library and so on. I can fill that out. I actually have this prepared before. As you see, this is the syntax that I would use. Just and select the choice for each of your file folders. So in my C drive here, I have the old ifs choices. So let's have, start with the stupid choice and work our way into more intelligent ones eventually. So let's do the folders first. And as you see, I'm going to open that. And that has simply the FLD on each one, just folders. Okay, let's just run that and see how that goes and see how that gets created. 
So I have a PowerShell script that I mentioned, which is actually on my desktop. There we go. Um, it's create containers. I'm going to edit that just to see it in um, the integrated scripting environment for PowerShell. There's that. All right. And as you see, this is taking now the name of the file, and I want to try with this one first. So I'm just going to copy the name of this file. There we go. And write that into the script. And that's, that's the name right there. All right. This script also takes another few other inputs here. The uh, link caption, if I create uh, in the navigation, I create a link there. I'm going to show you more of that. And the CSV file for which containers have been created, that one is used later when I'm actually importing the files into these directories or into these SharePoint containers, rather. So the, uh, the choices are in this CSV file. And at the end of this script, you can see that I go in and actually get all the information, all rows from that file. And then I check what information is in there and create all kinds of SharePoint objects depending on what, what happens here. So let me show you this. I have some more stuff here. Let's go through the, the functions here from the start. First, I'm, I'm enabling the um, publishing web on the site that I'm using. And then I'm setting the culture. This is an important one if you're not using English. It actually happens that if you try to manipulate a SharePoint website using PowerShell, and running a different language, then you'll have all kinds of strange errors. So you do need to set the thread language of PowerShell to the same as the website. So that's what I'm doing first here. I'm setting the culture, getting the culture from the current site, the SP web object, getting that name, and then putting that. So I'm setting the thread to that name. So that actually makes this work in, in Swedish, for example. Then I have a function that just replaces the file names so these are all characters that can't really be used inside a SharePoint container name. So I'm removing all those. And then I just have a logging thing, the right row there. Uh, here's an interesting one. I have the create lib doc lib. And that's taking the lib name and the type. And it tries to find the lib name. And if it doesn't exist, then I try to add it. And if it's a document library or a picture library, I create those. Document library and picture library. and um, then I try to get it again, and if it, uh, and then I add a link in the left nav navigation link there. I also enable uh, show subsites. Whenever I create a new site, I show subsites on that. And here's a section that creates choice um, fields within document library. So I can tag in the files with choices. And here's one that creates new subfolders as I previously said in this demonstration, I don't recommend subfolders, but if you want to use those, that works too. And then I um, set the folder name, uh, heading in the left nav of the new site, create a new link, and here's one to create new team sites. So you see it's creating all these SharePoint container objects. There's a lot of code here that, that also takes care of where you are in the hierarchy of the whole SharePoint level. But let's just run this now and see what happens. I have a newly created website here. It's just very, very empty. Site contents, you see it's just a new SharePoint team site based on the default Microsoft template. And it doesn't have any subsites or anything. Actually, there's a search one, but that's all. Anyhow, so I'm just going to run this now. And as you see, it's taking the folder in, folders input. So now this is going all these directories that I have here, the old file system here, these project files and the subdirectories, those will all be created there. The files will not be copied yet, just the directories will be created. So I'm going to run that. Right, it's actually creating it here, so let's open that one instead. Yes, of course. Let's go to that site and we'll see that things should start happening there in a few seconds. Okay, here the folders are being created, the shared documents, and as you see it's creating subfolders here, and we're done. So let's go into look at that, and I'm just going to refresh this. And here you see there are my subfolders, and inside that are my subfolders again. Okay, so, and also this uh, log file has been created. 
This is the create created containers. And let's just open that one. File open. Mouse. No. And there you go, that's uh, I'm just going to break that up now also. There we go. So here you see the um, folder path there has been created into this particular URL and um, the URL to the, f there we go, shared documents. And then there's that it is a folder, you can see that here too. Oops, let's maximize this. It's a folder and here is the, um, the um, path within that SharePoint site. All right, so that's the stupid way of doing it for us to just do folders. So let's do a bit more intelligent here and try to do uh, document libraries and subsites. So first I'm going to go ahead and reset this whole thing. I'm just going to recreate the whole, create the site collection. And this just resets the whole site collection and I've showed that in another demo. So I'm running that and that's going to take a few seconds. This ability to restart the whole SharePoint you know, trial run here is very important and one of the major benefits that you should really draw from this presentation. Uh, I hope you'll find it useful. I do certainly because you can just reset it and, and try another way of doing things. Now the next step uh, I'm, is just going to run this create container script again, but with some other choices. So let's look at the other choices here. And uh, the one that I want is here in the choices. And let's do the web document libraries, that one then. Let's see how that one looks. And as you see, this one has a bit more using SharePoint choices. I'm creating subsites, the webs, for the root folders here. And then I'm creating document libraries, one for each year. So let's run that one instead and see what happens. And then I will just want to run the script, but I want to take this as an input instead. Copy that and go in there and then run this. All right. All right, now I just run this. And here now it's creating a new team site, as you see, for the project one. And eventually it will start creating document libraries for the, the years that I have in my file system. And then it will create another team site for the project too, and so on. So let's just go in there. I think it should already be viewable. We'll refresh here. And here you see I have the project one subsite. And underneath there, there I will soon see the document libraries here being created. There we go, old files. And here I get the document library for the year 2012. And of course, there are no documents there now. Yet, that's the next step. All right, so you get the gist of the second option here, the one to create one web for each project and then document libraries for each of the subfolders. So finally, let's do another reset of this. I'm going to create, create the site collection again and reset the whole thing. And while that's going on, let's look at the third choice option here, the folders choice. Open that. And as you see, this one has the same folder path as before, but here I'm creating a document library and choice fields for this instead. Let's see how that goes. I'm just going to close that. And the script is probably still running. Yes, it needs some input. And then I'm going to run the script to create it all again. Just copy the file name there and go in here and just create the containers based on that input choice. All right. So I'm going to save that. And this is still creating the content database from this other one. So let's pause the recording for a few seconds. And here I'm back now. Uh, thanks to the magic of video editing, I'm, I've reset my site again. And I'm back from scratch. Now let's run this. And I'm just going to press play there. I'm clearing the screen and now it's creating document libraries and 
let's see what happens here. Here we have the document libraries to the left, as you see in project one now, became a document library. And I've also in that, I have created a new field. I'm going to go into the library settings and check my fields or columns. Same thing really. And here you have the year, which is the choice I created in the code now. And as you see, these have the values of the folder names that I had. So that's uh, all created now. Should be done in the script. Yep, it is. For, as you saw before, these uh, created containers now are in this CSV file. And the same CSV file is going to be used for input for the next uh, PowerShell script. And that's the copy files, which takes information from the file system and copies it into SharePoint. And here are the, the created containers, CSV file. That's the input for this one. And as you see, this one doesn't require an input of which URL I'm going to copy into because that's all in this created containers CSV file. So this has a cleanup thing here, cleaning the file names, and then it's uploading the file in library. And it also has another function down here, a little bit further down, that copy um, directory to library that takes a whole directory and copies all the files in it. And it also copies a directory directly to a SharePoint folder in case you want to use those, which I don't recommend. And here's the part that actually goes in and checks how this information is going to be copied in. So depending on which type I'm actually going to copy my files into, I have different functions for these. So let's just run this script now. We should see files beginning to pile in here. And here we go. And now I haven't actually done anything with the views here, but if I modify this view, and make it grouped by the year, that should work too. Group by year. And OK. You should see that it actually does fill out the year based on the folder names also. So that concludes my demonstration and I'm going to share the script with this too. And I hope you can find it useful for some of your own material. Thank you for watching this demonstration.